Bingo. Hello, everyone. I'm Becky, and I'm the lead digital skills teacher at the Pingua Lindsay Makerspace. Welcome to part two. It's time for us to add some coding into our game. Let's start with the alien. And I know that I'm coding the alien because I can see its picture in the top right corner here in the scripts area. We want our program to move the alien whenever the player presses the arrow keys. To do this, we're going to use keyboard inputs. An input is an action that tells a computer to do something. So for our inputs, we will go into the events menu in our toolbox and choose the when key pressed block, which is the second one down. Click on the drop down menu here and change it to the up arrow. This means that when we press the up arrow, the code we add underneath will run. Now we need to do this same step for the down arrow. And then the left arrow. And then the right arrow. Double check each of the blocks to make sure that you have all four of the arrow keys. The up arrow, the down arrow, the left arrow, and the right arrow. Now we're going to choose blocks from the motion command group up here in our toolbox. Choose the point in direction block down here and add one underneath each of the when arrow plus blocks. When you click on the white bubble here, you can move this arrow around to face in the direction of the arrow key you've chosen in the when key pressed events block. So we want to move this one to face straight upwards, just like the up arrow. And we will change this direction block so that the arrow faces downward, just like the down arrow key. Let's do the same for the left arrow. We want to move this pointer all the way to the very left. And now for the point direction block under the right arrow key pressed, we don't really need to change it because it's already pointing right. Let's test our code. Press the arrow keys. And you can see that now the alien faces in the same direction of the arrow keys that we press. But he isn't moving anywhere. Now we need to add a move 10 steps block under each program so it will also move in the direction of our arrow keys. So we're going to add four. Now test out your piloting skills by steering your alien through the maze. You'll see that we can now use the arrow keys to have him move through our whole maze. Try not to touch the walls, but if you do, ah! You'll see that my alien now has ghost powers and can just go through all of the walls. In order to stop this, we have to add more code. Let's move our alien back to the entrance. First, we need to add another events block. We're going to add the when green flagged clicked. Next, we need a forever loop from the controls group. And we wanna add this forever loop right underneath the when green flag clicked so that the code that we add inside here will keep running over and over again. Next, we're going to grab the if then 
block from the controls group and put it inside our forever loop. This if then block is a conditional statement block that means if one certain thing happens, then something else will happen. We want our alien to turn around and go backwards only if it touches the green wall. So, we need to add a sensing block to check whether the alien is touching the wall or not. Go to the sensing group in your toolbox and drag the touching color block, which is the second one down, right in between the if and the then in our conditional statement block. Click the bubble here and choose the dropper tool. You'll get a circle. And when you hover this circle around the different colors on your screen, you'll see that the dropper tool changes to match whatever color you hover over. If you look at my dropper circle, it now has the same color as my walls. And when I click on it, it now shows up in the touching color sensing block. Now our conditional if then statement says if the alien is touching the green wall, then something else will happen. Now we want this something else to be our alien jumping back away from the wall. How we will do this is to add a turn right 15 degrees block. And this is in our movement group. It's the second one down. And we're going to click and drag this right inside our if then conditional statement. And I want you to change the number 15 to 180. This will turn our alien around. We will also add in the move 10 steps block right underneath the turn degrees block and inside our if then statement. This will make it so that the alien will move backwards away from the wall. Let's test our code. Press the green flag and check to see if your alien turns around when he runs into the wall. Oh, can't go through. Oh, can't go through. So he's prevented from going through the walls now. Okay. Now, we want our alien to always start at the beginning of our maze every time we play the game. So, let's move our alien back to the entrance of our maze. And then we're going into the motion category and grabbing the go to X and Y block. And we're going to put this right under the when green flag clicked. The numbers beside the X and the Y measure the exact location of the alien on your stage. This means that no matter where the alien is on your stage, every time you press the green flag, it'll start at the very beginning of the maze again. Now our game is complete. Let's play. Press this button in the corner here to enlarge your game and start playing. See how fast you and your friends can get your alien through your maze and back home to his home planet. There we go and my alien has made it home. Make sure you save your game by clicking the file and then save to your computer. I hope you had fun making this maze game with me, and I challenge you to design your own maze game with a maze that you've designed. If you do take on the challenge, please post your game on our Pinguat Facebook page. I can't wait to see all of your own amazing mazes, and I'd like to invite you to follow Pingua on social media and to sign up for our newsletter for updates on more online lessons, activities, tutorials, and more. Bye!